outside this morning. Neighbors waking up to a heavy police presence. This is on the 300 block of Concio Drive. Officers say Chief McManus states that uh, it was a call for domestic disturbance. The homeowner's family members were in the front yard with three children and told police that the homeowner's former partner was acting irrationally inside. Um, two officers then entered the home. According to Chief McManus, the suspect turned to face the officers, had a gun in his hands and pointed it towards the two officers. Both officers shot multiple times, killing that suspect. That suspect is described as a 45-year-old male. This area is going to be blocked off for quite some time. You can head over to ksat.com for the latest details. And tomorrow on GMSA, exercising can cost you a pretty penny, but it doesn't have to. We're going to explain how. And temperatures. and temperatures are warming up. We're at 61 degrees outside right now, which is much warmer than how we started. We were at 43 to begin the day. Mold, oak, hackberry, and mulberry are present, but they are all low. And in the forecast today, just know that it's going to be a Ooh. pleasant day, 75 degrees and sunny. And then we'll have morning clouds early tomorrow morning, but afternoon sunshine humidity returns on Monday. And we have the chance for thunderstorms Tuesday and Wednesday, guys. Gorgeous. I know. Yeah, really, nice, really nice today and tomorrow, but just uh, be prepared for the thunderstorms in the middle of the week. Gotcha. But a nice day for brunch, right? Yeah, yeah. really nice day for mm -hmm. brunch. So. Speaking of brunch, <laughs> David Elder in Texas Eats coming up in the next five, four. I really hope I'm counting this down right. Yes. Three, <laughs> two. Bye, guys. Have a great day. Bye. Time. Three, two, one. I'm David Elder. <laughs> I'm a husband, a father, a home cook, and a food fanatic. That is amazing. Woo. I wasn't born in Texas, but I got here as soon as I could. <laughs> Texas food is diverse, full of both history and culture. Join me as I travel to farms and restaurants, sharing recipes from friends across the Lone Star State. Welcome to Texas Eats. Today's episode is all about brunch. We're traveling to three restaurants and a food truck to find some of the best brunch spots around. Plus, I'm going shopping at HEB to get ingredients to make Texas French toast, and I show you an easy recipe that you can make at home. The first stop on our brunch journey is inside of a massive New York style diner that's serving up all kinds of tri-state treats and killer cocktails. This is Max and Louie's New York Diner. So this is our French toast grilled cheese. Ooh. I mean, it's two things people love. And grilled cheese, I feel like in the last couple of years, have really taken on just a popularity all on their own. Crazy grilled cheese sandwiches are like, you can really do a lot. It's a very versatile vehicle to do a lot of different flavors with. Mac and cheese and grilled cheese and people are into cheese, I guess. Yeah. Right? So we take our French toast, you know, really golden and beautiful. A lot of butter on, the, um, on there. We typically use cheddar and Swiss. Oh my, that's six yep. pieces of cheese. It's gonna go right into the cheese melter right up here. How long does it stay up there to melt? Uh, you know, a minute or so. We want it to get real ooey and gooey. You know, it takes a lot of nerve to um, put New York in your name unless you're gonna deliver New York. We got a whole stack of bacon that we put on this sucker. So there you go. Okay. Yeah. That alone right there, fluffed up is like, that's a monster. Yep. This now goes onto the plate. Red bliss potatoes, sauteed onions, go right on plate like that. Let's do a little bit of that just to give a little Ooh. bit of, and now. And that's it right there. Well, you gotta have a little garnish, <laughs> you know? So a couple little fresh slices of orange. You know what I love about this? That's Instagramable, hold it right there. I'm just gonna, my gosh. Oh yeah, put some green on it, there you go. And now the secret weapon comes down. You can just put a little oh bit of that gosh. right on top. I mean, when people come and order this thing, are they do they know what they're getting? Like when they order it, or are they just like they've heard you know it through what? the grapevine? They, uh, they know, but um, you know, but they don't. <laughs> you know, they think they know. That's just ooey gooey madness right there. Okay, here we go. All right, so we're in the kitchen. We're gonna eat this bad boy hot right here. 
because it's that good. Watch those eggs. Ready, good. Here we go, right into the. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. I want that. I just wanted to. Some, oh, yeah. Some of that goo. Oh, oh, my goodness. Your food's so good here. I heard that you even still eat here. Is that correct? You know, it's funny. My wife and I, we we, uh, we eat here more than we eat in any other restaurant in San Antonio. Look at that. We, it's Look our that. style food here. here. And you're taking oh, it to Oh, boy. You're taking it to that next <laughs> level. Forget about it. I'm going to go home now. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah. You got the all that salty goodness from the bacon. Mmm. I'm gonna keep eating this one. What else we got on the menu? What are we cooking up? Okay. <laughs> they're getting their French toast, dipping it in custard, and then putting it on a flat top. And then they're getting six slices of cheese, putting it in between the sandwich, cuts of bacon inside of it. Then you got this butter maple syrup blend that gets poured on top. And if you have the egg sunny side up, you pop it, and then it goes all over the sandwich. So it's super gooey and delicious. It's like everything that brunch is supposed to be in one bite. Absolutely delicious. If you look on my menu, there's one item that says Drew's favorite, and that's what we're making right now, which Good. is my banana nut pancakes. Oh, man. So this batter, it's a little thick. We whip the uh, whites to peaks. We fold them in so you get some pillows. A lot of butter on there, so you'll see when we do the flip, it'll give it a little bit of a um, an edge. Our bagels, our rye bread, our corned beef, our pastrami, these are all New York classic things. You know, either we make them in the style of New York, some of the things we bring from New York specifically because that's the only place to get them. I anticipated this to be our most popular item on our menu. It's yeah. number three. French toast in general is our number one. Wow. You guys don't do anything like halfway. You go full tilt, you bring it because like this is just decadent. Once you start seeing the bubbles, we'll give them a flip. I'm a flip once guy. There's nothing like watching a pancake get flipped over so you can see the golden brown goodness. That ring is from the butter. Right. That's what I look for. If yeah. you want the ring and you're making this at home, you got to use butter. Got to use butter. That's a teachable moment. That's a tagline. We're just throwing it in. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Do you use this on a lot of your dishes? This, this like, is little uh, concoction? On our pan you know, our pancakes, our waffles. Taking cold butter and cold syrup and putting it on spectacular pancakes. So we take our butter, we take our syrup, we emulsify the butter slowly, cold butter into our syrup. Oh. The consistency on it, though, you yeah, can see it's delicious. When the pancakes get pulled off the flat top, they're ready to get dressed up. Might need an extra second, but for TV, we'll be fine. <laughs> You'll eat around the edge. I'll eat around the edges. Yeah. So we put a little bit of our uh, powdered sugar on there. Just a little bit. Some more fresh bananas. I probably use a banana and a half in every order. We have a whole recipe that we do just for the pecans. They'll go, those go on top there. Go for it, buddy. Look at that. I want to make it rain. Oh, yeah. Hello. Look at that. I may have gone a little overboard on the syrup, but only maybe. Hey, let's do this together. Yeah. How about that? I'm going to dive right in. This okay. is your favorite. This is Drew's favorite. That's why I'm digging in. We'll Cheers. Do a little clink. There we go. Okay. Mm. Oh, wow. That's not bad. That grilled cheese is like super decadent. It's over the top. It's going to blow your mind. This is comfort food. This is gonna make you feel good. This is like, you wanna relax when you're eating this. You wanna watch some show, you wanna read the newspaper. This is just, that's a relaxing meal. The elements are there. The banana is very prevalent, it's very forward. And that's what you want when you're making this dish. And this is for the cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> the butter with the crispy edges, it's that texture that you want. You get that little crisp on the yeah. edge, sets it apart. Good job. Thank you. The sugar rush morning. It's the homemade candy pecans. It's the fresh bananas that get tossed into the pancakes that make this the ultimate comfort dish. When you take a bite out of it, this thing is not over the top. It's the perfect blend of sweetness. You get some of that maple butter syrup poured on top of it as well. There's nothing better. We've seen French toast grilled cheese. We've seen crazy banana pancakes. Now, what are you cooking up? We're gonna make our New York Benedict. What makes it New York? What does? 
the bagel. <laughs> I bring my pastrami and my corned beef from New York. You got a pastrami and guy. I got a pastrami guy. I got all kinds of guys. I'm from New York. You know, you never have enough guys. You know, when we make a sandwich, we don't put it on the grill. It gets steamed. But for the Benedict, we, um, we, we grill it a little bit. I gotta say, my favorite thing about a Benedict is the hollandaise. I think we have one of the best hollandaises in the city. So normally with a, um, with Benedict's, you know, you have your Canadian bacon and then you have your, your poached eggs and your hollandaise. Here, we put the poached eggs on first. Hello. Wild, Drew's wild. Kick saving a beauty. <laughs> Let's get a plate. Take those uh, off there, right on here. Okay. Look at this gorgeous pastrami oh, right on my top. Gosh. And look at that, just a nice little char on the edges from yeah. being I on mean, the grill. This is, yeah, this is just kind of just a texture then, waking it back up, right? Yeah, absolutely. So see, you can't leave my man hanging right there. No, we can't at all. Woo! There we go. I'm okay. already sold right there. Yep. That looks insane. So you got your poached eggs, you got your bagel, you have your um, your pastrami. And then we have our unbelievable oh my gosh. Ho hollandaise. That looks so creamy. Oh, so creamy. If, if your hollandaise looks like this, you know that's gotta be butter on butter with butter, butter. in it. Lots of butter. Lots of butter. That's basically liquid butter. Oh, don't forget. You need a little sprinkle Yeah, put there. your veggies on it. Yep. So you get the home fries, got a little, onions, onions, a little in onions in there. Don't forget. Couple of oranges. Woo! You got some Instagramable food over here. I know. That looks I gotta good. do a better job with my Instagram. <laughs> it's a, a New York take on the classic, you know, Eggs Benedicts. We want to provide a level of hospitality for guests that exceeds their expectations. Oh my gosh. Did you see the egg explode? Uh oh. Oh my god. Oh. Hey! What's brunch without the brunch? <laughs> we thought about having the chef's table in the kitchen, but it's a little hectic back here on a Saturday or Sunday. But I'll stay here while he turns his back to the, to the camera. That's I don't know good. if I've ever had two things at the same restaurant at the same time that have made me just want to just stop what I'm doing and walk away. That's incredible. If you were to put that hollandaise in a cup, don't get mad at me if I was to drink it. That is insane. Everything, the texture on the bagel, putting it on the on the flat top to get some more of that little like just little texture, little crispies on the edge. The pastrami's absolutely fantastic. And then the poached egg, poached perfectly, but the hollandaise sells it, brings it home. And of course those potatoes. This looks like a wild Bloody Mary. All right, I gotta take a drink here. Oh yeah. You can taste the, the alcohol, which yeah. is why you're drinking it. But then yeah. you get a little bit of tomato in there, you get the spices. It's exactly what you want from a Bloody Mary. By the way, did I tell you that those pickles come from New York? <laughs> Hi, oh. oh yeah. Just enough crunch. So this is your- This is our version of a mimosa mule. A mule mosa? If you want to call it a mule mosa, you can have it. It's yeah. okay. Oh, that's so good. It's good. And then that mint right on top, it really helps actually balance out. When you get something this decadent, like the hollandaise yeah. and everything, and you get a little it's bit of that fresh mint, yeah, the, yeah, it cuts mint through and, uh, it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the spot to come to in San Antonio. When you're thinking brunch, everything's delicious out here. And check out his new show that's going to be crossing the whole state of Texas. You're on it right and now. And we're on it. You're on it right now. Oh, we're on it. <laughs> yeah, oh, we're on it. You're on the we're show. On I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I appreciate your participation in all these things. So good. This is delicious. This dish is like the A train from San Antonio to Brooklyn. Transports you to New York without having to leave SA. You have that hollandaise, Thing is just creamy. It's like basically a butter sauce with a little bit of egg yolk and a little bit of lemon. It's the ultimate blend though, and it's super dense. You mix that in there with two well-poached eggs. You have the two bagels that are made fresh in-house. Put those on the bottom, your poached egg, your hollandaise, your pastrami. Nothing tops the flavor that you get out of that pastrami. Shut your mouth, that's delicious. The food out here at Max and Louis is absolutely incredible. A true taste of New York right here in San Antonio. Coming up later in the show, we're gonna go inside of a New Orleans style restaurant that's serving up some killer beignets. And next, we're gonna go shopping at HEB to get ingredients to make some French toast, some bacon, and some crispy eggs. So don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back.
Welcome back to Texas Eats. Now it's time to go shopping at my local HEB to get the ingredients to make some French toast. First thing on the list is to get some fresh berries. And at my HEB, they have them right here at the front. I'm gonna be getting these ones right here. This is a blueberry raspberry mix. And we can get some fresh strawberries to put on top of our French toast. Looks delicious. The next ingredient we're gonna get is the bacon. That's my favorite part of breakfast, right? And check this out. HEB has a wide variety of bacons available. They have a maple, black pepper, jalapeno, a campfire, and their original. But we're gonna be going with today the applewood smoked bacon. This is like the king of bacons. This is the ultimate bacon flavor. When you think of bacon, we're getting this one. Ooh. Sorry, this is just a personal thing. I'm just looking. My son really likes the Chobani Kid Packet yogurts. We were told HEB has like their own line of them. The next item on our list, the eggs. Very important item inside of French toast. Plus, we're gonna be making some crispy eggs. So we're gonna get the HEB cage-free eggs. It's one of the options that they have out here. And we're gonna get the large ones, because we don't need the extra large. We're just making some good old eggs, baby. I don't know why. You can have breakfast without butter. And HEB has a salted and an unsalted option. We're gonna go with the unsalted. The base for the French toast mixture is heavy whipping cream. Now, to lower the fat content, you can use milk, but if you want the flavor, you gotta use heavy whipping cream. To make French toast, you gotta have maple syrup. HEB has two different versions of the organic maple syrup. They have a dark and an amber color, and I'm gonna go for the amber. You gotta top it all off with powdered sugar. Bam. A lot of the items can be found right here in the baking aisle. Also in the baking aisle, seasonings and extracts. Oh, bread and tortillas. Ooh, imagine like a tortilla, a French tortilla. I don't know, is that a crepe? <laughs> I, think that's, I think that's a crepe. Let's see. So you can't have French toast without toast, and you can't have toast in Texas without Texas toast. And this is the last item we need to make our French toast. Now it's time to check out. And today, I brought my reusable HEB bags. This one is insulated, so it's good for hot and cold items. And they also have bags to support your local favorite sports team. This is great. So I'll put these down right here. How's it going, Emma? Doing great. We're making French toast today. So many things. You know, it takes a lot to make French toast, doesn't it? Do you like French toast? I love French toast. You love French toast. Do you ever make it at home? Yes, I made it two days ago. Oh, really? What's your secret? What do you what do you like to use to make your French toast? Just eggs, milk, and cinnamon. Oh, really? That's pretty straightforward. I know, I went a little fancy with this one. So you can see right there on the screen, the total for this meal is $40.69. A lot of these items, including the eggs, the heavy whip, you can use these on different meals, even the powdered sugar. So it's really cost effective. And that one can go with, it's, there we go. Cool. Thank you so much, y'all. So now we have all of our ingredients to go make some French toast. Coming up later on the show, we go inside the Texas Eats Kitchen at the Culinary Institute of America, where we make the French toast, bacon, and crispy eggs. And coming up next on the show, we go inside of a hot local brunch spot that's serving up some delicious food. So don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back.
Welcome back to Texas Eats. Today's episode is all about brunch, and this next spot is serving up a sweet treat. This hot brunch spot is serving up a killer Bavarian pancake that you gotta see to believe. Let's go inside the Magnolia Pancake House. Today we're cooking up a apple fanny cooking. Apple fanny cooking. Which is, is that, that a fake word? No, that's a real word. <laughs> that's a real, that's word. a real word. Sticky, sweet goodness that you want to start your morning with. So we're gonna make a nice, nice caramel. Okay. My uh, batter mix, which is just flour, salt, and a little sugar. My wet mix, which is uh, just eggs, milk, and vanilla. Now, is there any particular kind of consistency that you're going for for this dough? Well, right here? You, you want it smooth, but just a little lumpy. A little lumpy. Just a little lumpy. <laughs> a little lumpy. And while you do that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make the caramel. A little bit of butter, melt that, get that real good, melted, so we can incorporate the secret blend of spices. It's not just brown sugar. I can't tell you what they are. <laughs> Cinnamon apples and oh, sweet you butter. Can smell it. Oh my goodness. Man. Oh yeah, there's definitely something in there. The apple fanny cooking is a really simple recipe. It's just flour, three eggs, a little bit of vanilla extract, some seasonings, brown sugar, apples. There are some secret ingredients in here. He won't tell me what they are, but we'll see how it turns out. Once you got the caramel going, you're gonna go all the way around. All the way around, just like that. Get out of here. We're gonna put it in the oven for 10 minutes at 375 degrees. Okay. All right, 10 minutes is up. It's time to look at this bad boy. Here we go. Woo! Look at that. Oh my and that's God. the bottom of it. This is insane. Look at that. The chunks of apple like floated to the top. <laughs> that's the stuff nobody gets to see, man. And this is finished with some powdered sugar. More powdered sugar right there. Oh my gosh. And some house whipped cream. There we go. A fanny cooking. I think I'm dreaming right now. That's a lot of sweetness there. It's a good way to start the morning. When the fanny cooking came out of the oven and he flipped it out of the pan right onto that dish, all the brown sugar that was stuck to the pan was still sticking to it, so it had all that goo. And then he put all that powdered sugar on top and a little bit of whipped cream. I was sold the moment I saw it. Oh my goodness. You can smell the apples, you can smell the, the cinnamon and all the different spices and the sugar. Yeah, it's a lot of happiness going on there. <laughs> it's a lot of happiness. All right, got my fork and knife. You cut off a piece, I cut off a piece. We'll dip it into that. Oh, look at you, it's fork tender, look at you. I'm gonna dip it in that whipped cream. That's the bite right there. Cheers. Absolutely love at first bite. Incredible. The moment I took a bite of this apple fanny kuchen, I'm kooky for kuchen. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. I can see why this is such a classic dish on your menu. It's sweet, it's delicious, great texture, and it's huge. You could share this and you'll be okay, but honestly, I would, I would be just greedy and eat it all to myself. Yep, yep I, I would eat it all by myself. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's do one more bite. Oh, baby. Here we go, cheers. Mm. My God, okay, it's all mine now. The apple fanny kuchen is an incredible dish that they're preparing over here. It has the powdered sugar, so it's a light little dust of sweetness on top, but then you have the caramelized brown sugar, the butter, the apples that are still tender on the inside. Take that bite, it's like the ultimate apple fritter, cinnamon roll pancake, and it's fluffy from the eggs in the mixture omelet that you've ever had in your whole life. There's nothing like it. Coming up later on Texas Eats, we go inside of a food truck serving up some massive bagel sandwiches. And coming up next, we go inside a New Orleans-inspired restaurant that's serving up some authentic beignets. So don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back.
Welcome back to Texas Eats. Earlier in this brunch-packed show, we got to go inside the kitchen at a New York diner serving up a French toast grilled cheese sandwich. I went shopping at HEB to get ingredients to make Texas French toast, and we went inside an iconic brunch spot serving up a decadent Bavarian treat. And now, you're probably wondering why I'm covered in powdered sugar. These are the best beignets in San Antonio, and we're gonna go inside Nola Brunch of Beignets to see how Chef Peter Simpson is making them happen. We're gonna start with all of our dry stuff here. We got some powdered sugar. <laughs> yeah, you do. All over love, the place. <laughs> we love powdered sugar up here at Nola, man. It's, if you leave without powdered sugar on you, you didn't do it right. We'll go ahead and get our cinnamon and salt, and we'll go ahead and mix that dry stuff together first, and that, that really helps everything just mix together real nice so you don't have clumps. Always mix your wet and your dry, and then you put the two together. So when the flour mixes in with the dough, you got a little bit of the water in there and the vanilla all together, some of that powdered sugar, it becomes that gooey, pasty beignet dough. It's great, you wanna get in there? Yeah, I actually do. I, <laughs> <laughs> I this is the best part, man. The glory always goes to the frying part, but this is where all the love's at. All right, I gotta get my hands in the mixture here. Work all around the edges, make sure you get all the dry flour from the bottom mixed in there. Oh yeah. I feel like that scene from Jurassic Park where they stick their hands in the, in the poop. Hey, no dinosaur poop up here. <laughs> yeah. If you need somebody to mix the dough and sing a song for you, man, just hit me up. Mix in the dough. You know what I like to think about when I'm doing this? Is that one day, this dough is gonna grow up and become something delicious. <laughs> Today's the day, buddy. <laughs> Today's the day. Look at that. And then, it was a successful there surgery, doctor. That's why we love it. And then, just to kind of even things out, we're gonna sprinkle a little bit of flour on top so that it's not quite so sticky anymore. We're just gonna All that work to get the flour incorporated, and you can just go and, and throw it right back. You know? <laughs> I can't believe that this sticky, gooey dough becomes a fluffy, crispy beignet. Just gonna kind of gently work it out, and we're gonna press all that stuff out. So it's just kind of a process of working from the middle out, trying to get about a quarter inch thick, and that gives it enough to where it puffs really nice. You know, having those little hollow crevices makes it real aromatic. And uh, so when you pop them open, you can smell all those flavors inside too. And that's what makes a good beignet. All these beignets for Nola, we do out as one little fryer, so we, we crank them out. You gotta learn how to do them fast. And we're just gonna cut Press that in them. half. Okay. Yep, and then we'll cut each half into three long strips. And then uh, we've got our beignets ready to go. 36, I probably do eight of those a day. So 36 times eight. Oh, jeez. Yeah, that's a, that's a math 36 problem. 36 times. <laughs> that's a lot of beignets. Chef Peter is old school, man. He's rolling it out by hand, and he said he's doing just about 2,000 of these things a week. This is where, like, you see them come to life. This is when they become beignets. Look at that chef nose. Always splash away from you. That's right, always. Have you ever burned yourself? Yes, sir. It happens, but you only dip your hands in the fryer oil once. That's a teachable moment. <laughs> So they don't get fried real hard, not crispy. We cook these just until they're nice and tender. So look, these are looking nice and golden. <sighs> it's a way to start your day right there. As soon as the dough hits the fryer, it becomes aromatic. Just in the air, you can smell the cinnamon, the vanilla, the powdered sugar. It smells like desserts are floating in the air. Pop them open in there. Oh, look, you, see you got a pocket. Steam? You get that? Yes. Nice little pocket, yeah. nice and airy. You see these crags of beautiful fried dough. Here, I'll, I'll have that one. I guess it's destroyed. Ruined. And they are hot, they'll get you. That's insane, right here. Mm. And then I got one here that's got a little bit of our lemon curd. We're gonna go ahead and fill oh it up. Oh my goodness. Not too, too much, but it's got a nice little bit of uh, flavor inside oh, there. Oh, look at that one, look at that. Get a nice puffy one here, and we'll get our cranberry oh, orange. He, he just went for it, he just stabbed Boom, it. Boom, look at that. And then, we'll get it with that powdered sugar, let it rain. That's our seasonal one there, looking good. Our lemon, boom. This is a cranberry orange stuffed to the brim. Oh my gosh, it's dripping. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes, sir. You could put that on anything. Look, at it. it's just coming out, y'all. It is stuffed. The beignet itself doesn't need all this stuff on there, but when you put it on top of it, it just makes it that much more delicious. Step it up a little bit. You, oh, yeah. And look at all that powdered sugar. Oh my gosh, it's like an extra layer of beignet skin. 
The cranberry orange has a great flavor to it. Slightly tart, very sweet. It's the perfect balance of the cranberry and the orange together. But I gotta try the lemon curd. My favorite. That's your favorite? Yes, sir. All right, here we go. Look at that. It's coming out like a lemon curd lava. If there was a lemon curd lava island, I'd live on it. Dude, that's absolutely delicious. Thank you, sir. That is a refined flavor that you know you've had this recipe and you've worked it and you know what you're doing when you're making it because it is it's just perfect. When it comes to a sweet treat for brunch, nothing beats these beignets. And coming up later on the show, how to get your hands on some over-the-top bagel sandwiches. And coming up next on Texas Eats, we go inside the Texas Eats kitchen at the Culinary Institute of America to cook up some Texas French toast. So don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back. on Texas Eats, I went shopping through my local HEB to find ingredients to make Texas French toast. And now, I'm at the Texas Eats kitchen at the Culinary Institute of America to cook it up. Now it's time to make our Texas French toast thick cut bacon and crispy eggs. First things first to get started, we're gonna get our heavy whipping cream, pour it straight into the bowl. We're also gonna add in our two canned milks, that is condensed milk and evaporated milk. Next up, I have a little spice blend right here. Check that out. Cinnamon, nutmeg, and ground cloves all mixed together. And it's just enough to give this some good flavor, but you don't want to overpower this mixture. Today, we're using the HEB Pure Madagascar Bourbon Vanilla Extract. This is a high quality vanilla extract. You can use any one you like. This is the one we're using today, though. There you go. And you can measure things out. I'm just putting little drops and dashes. This is how my mom used to make it. She didn't use measuring devices at all. She would just eyeball the whole thing and it always came out good. You add in two eggs, right into the bowl. Then you're ready to whisk it up. Start whisking. This recipe is extremely decadent. When you use the heavy whipping cream like this, it adds like a whole other dimension of flavor. Brunch is just a decadent meal. Whoever invented brunch was just like, how do we get dessert earlier in the day? That's all it is. How do we get something tasty in the middle of the day? And you don't want to mix this up too much. You can start making like a little whipped cream. You don't want that. You just want to whisk it up enough to mix it all together. Get anything from the bottom, bring it up to the top. And you always got to do a taste test with this. So I just use my pinky, right? You just kind of a little dip in there. Absolutely fantastic. 
When you get the notes of the cinnamon, the nutmeg, the ground cloves, the vanilla, all together in that one little taste right there, you're done, that's it. And it has to be sweet, make sure it's sweet. Next step is to dunk the Texas toast into the mixture. I'm feeling a little hungry today, so I'm gonna use four pieces of the H-E-B Texas toast. And you don't wanna leave them in too long. There's some recipes that call for you to like sit it in overnight, do different things like that. I just don't, I don't like it soggy. I don't want it to be too soggy. So I like to just kind of let them float in there for a little bit, kind of get covered and then flip them. While that's finishing up, they're absorbing all that delicious flavor. We have a griddle set to about a medium high heat. I'm gonna throw on two pieces of butter. This is unsalted butter. Pull them right out of the mixture onto the griddle. You wanna hear sizzling, cause that means it's ready to go. If you don't, turn the heat up on your grid a little bit more, give it a few seconds, if not a minute, and you should be ready to dance. What you're looking for is for the edges to be caramelized and to create a little bit of a crispy edge to it. That's it. We're gonna get started on our bacon. We're gonna go for two pieces. I like a griddle that uses all these different flavors all at once, because sometimes they jump across, right? And it gets kind of married together. Oh, you want bacon on it. If I can get bacon flavored anything, I'd eat it. Give me some bacon cologne, I'd wear it. And we're gonna crack two eggs right there. Now the trick is don't flip the egg. Let the edges get brown and crispy and you're ready to go. If you can wake up to this smell right here, you're doing something right. We're gonna bring over our organic H-E-B maple syrup. We have some fresh berries that are also ready to go as well. And we also have our powdered sugar. It's gonna go on top. Eggs look like they're done. So I'm gonna pull them off. First thing on the plate, put them off to the side. Next up off the griddle, the French toast. I'm gonna stack them up just like that. And now bacon's ready to come off. Has a nice rich red color to it. We'll put that right across right here. To finish off the dish, I'm gonna drizzle on some of this organic maple syrup right on top of our stack. I love maple syrup. We're gonna get a piece of butter, put it right on top, and I have my powdered sugar. To get this recipe, don't forget, just head on over to kset.com slash Texas Eats. Now, it's time for a quick recipe with H-E-B Chef Scott and Charlotte in this week's Backyard Kitchen. I know I made it, but that's really good. <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm Scott. And I'm Charlotte. And I love the ingredients that are in front of us. It's a really simple recipe. It looks very simple. There's about four ingredients. Yes. Minus the chips. But you have one of my favorite things in the bowl, avocados. Avocados. One of my favorite things to eat. It's about $40 worth of avocado Ooh, right yeah. there. Yeah, so what are we doing um, to our so fantastic avocados? We're going to do a new play on guac. So instead of adding all that pico, lime juice, yeah. we're going to add some walnuts for crunch, some pomegranates for a little touch yeah, a little of sweetness, sweet and, and then some chopped spinach, add all together, season to taste, and that is it. Super simple, serve with yes. your favorite stuff. Here we go. Absolutely. So you ready? So we're going to do I'm some ready. of the... And if you guys My don't like stretched. walnuts, you could always use um, like chopped almonds, um, smoked almonds would be good smoked in that. Smoked almonds also very good. All right. And then the pomegranate, um, seeds. the pomegranate seeds, you can buy them already. Um, you can buy the cold. arrows. Arrows, thank you. I like it. The arrows already already uh, pulled. And then of course our chopped spinach. That's right. For some extra added. Yeah. This is just a big pinch of salt, a little pepper. Oh, we're gonna need more salt than that. Oh, of sure. course. Because it's more salt, Tompkins. Salt <laughs> All right, so it all gets mixed up. It gets really simple. So now yep. what? Once you get this all mixed up. You can serve this on toast or you can serve it with chips. And then, of course, to go along with this, I would do a little Bohemia or the Gran Agave Paloma. For this and other recipes, log on to kset.com slash H-E-B. Coming up after the break. These are bagel sandwiches. And guess what? These bagels are made on a food truck. We're going to go inside the Wild Barley Kitchen Co. and see how they're making them from scratch. Don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back.
These are bagel sandwiches, and guess what? These bagels are made on a food truck. We're gonna go inside the Wild Barley Kitchen Co. and see how they're making them from scratch. You guys got kettle coffee out here. It's delicious. I'm gonna be sipping on this, but you're gonna be showing me how you roll up your bagels. How do you do it? We form it into about 125 gram balls, roll it into a log, and then roll it actually into the bagel form itself. We're gonna start with uh, the dough about halfway in your hand, wrap it around, and then you have about a two inch overlap on your dough. We want all that seam to close up and form a nice, beautiful, round bagel. Toss them in. Uh, we do about eight at a time. So when they're done boiling, we're gonna take them over to the little drain tray, let them drip dry just a little bit, and we'll put seeds on them and throw them in the oven. This is the everything uh, recipe. It, it smells just, like everything. It's, it's such a great fragrance that you get out of the oven once, once these things are baked. Flip them in each side, they'll get right attached to those bagels that, from that honey, and then we'll just lay them out on this board. Here, I'll hold the bowl for you. Oh, thank you. I'll try to be helpful. Thank you for your help right now. It's, just, it's the little things that yeah. I can contribute to feel really, really special during the day. It's like stuff like this. This is the last one, so time for the important job and we're gonna hand that to you. And that's putting them in the oven. Pick it up, don't hit anything with the end of it. Oh. And we're gonna put it right there next to the fire. Next to the fire? Yep. And just right on the board? Right on the board. If you put them right onto the brick, they'll stick. And so that board allows a little bit less of that direct heat. And so we'll do it for about five minutes and then we'll flip them off the board. Oh so my there gosh, we go. look at that. You're looking for how, how tough they are on the outside, the coloring, the smell, the aroma. Look how much they puffed up, too. Exactly. That is, that's so, perfect. So yeah. It looks like a bagel. It looks like a bagel. We made bagels. <laughs> so let's make some sandwiches. <laughs> to get things going, they're just rolling them up right there fresh, throwing it right into the honey water, boils up for just a little bit. They get drained, and then they're brought over, and they're seeded. The ones that we were making are everything bagels, so they have everything on them. Rosemary, garlic, poppy seed. Puts it onto that plank right into the oven. They get tossed on the bottom, and that way they can get a little toasty on the bottom, and they finish off in there, comes out, it's ready to cut, get toasted, made into a sandwich. A little bit of oil. Anything special with the hash browns? We took this potato and peeled it up this morning, <laughs> did the normal hash brown thing. And this one might be a little bit big, but that's, you know, you're eating it, so you'll love it. I love it, yeah, I'm already down with that. Set it and forget it, and then... I like it. I'll set it and forget it reference. All right. You guys got some thick cut bacon right there too? Yeah, we tried the small stuff and it didn't quite work. Um, sometimes <laughs> we'll grab a slab and just cut it ourselves. This is like breakfast on a bagel, man. That's right. It looks delicious. <laughs> You got your bacon all cooked up, you got your sausage finished, and then your hash browns finishing up right here. Oh, well, we need to get an egg on, and then as soon as all that's come together, we'll melt some cheddar on. Oh, oh, here we go. Oh, look at the salt, that looks great. And the fresh pepper. We have the everything bagel that we just saw get made. We're gonna cut into it and toast it up. All right, let's slice it in half. Look how beautiful that is. That's a perfect bagel. It is. You guys know what you're doing over here. Good job, Holland. <laughs> I put them in, though. I should get some credit, right? You get a little credit. <laughs> get our sausage. Don't forget your bacon. Oh, my gosh. That is nuts, man. All right. Have you ever just tried that just by itself with the bagel? I put down a jar or two. <laughs> Woo! Look at that. Uh. You guys are crazy, man. That is a huge sandwich. It's good. It's really good. Let's <laughs> oh find out what God. you think. Coming up after the break, I finally get to sink my teeth into this massive bagel sandwich. Texas Eats will be right back.
Welcome back to Texas Eats. Before the break, we saw Wild Barley Kitchen Co. create the ultimate bagel brunch sandwich. And now, it's time to eat it. The stack sandwich from out here at Wild Barley Kitchen. Amazing. This is a huge bagel sandwich. I'm excited to take a bite out of this bad boy. I don't even know how you approach this thing. This is huge. This is huge. Wow. Oh my God. The bagel is amazing. Nice crunch on the outside, soft in the middle, lightly toasted. But that jam is nuts. It's sweet, but it's also a little spicy. This is like the ultimate brunch sandwich. Wow. Thank you for watching today's episode of Texas Eats All About Brunch. To get information on the places that I visited, just head on over to ksat.com slash Texas Eats. And don't forget to watch the show every Saturday at 10 o'clock in the morning on KSAT 12. The bagels out here at Wild Barley Kitchen Co. are absolutely incredible. Mark, Holland, thank you so much for having me out here. And you got some bags for me as well, right? Bagels to go, baby. That's what I like.